and then I open up by praying over those. And then, so if you have prayer concerns, and then we also encourage people, and I hope we remember to do this, is that when you think about it, walk out and take a picture. And so we take it with us to, in the week, to remember to pray as well, okay? Charles, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. thank you, yeah. Jay. Yeah. Charles Rice's class is still making meals for the Renegades. And she had just really on Mondays is all she's requesting. And so she just asked, they just asked, not she, they just asked if we pass this around if anybody feels like they would like to, to help. So it's they not meals like every day of the week, so but on Mondays. Very easy. Uh -huh. Yeah, casseroles or whatever. So if you can help with that, um, just let them know and they'll follow up. They actually live right down from you, Fosters. I don't know if you can see yeah. that or not. Yeah, yeah. We've, been, yeah. Yeah. we've delivered them. Okay, good, good. Okay, so let me let me open in prayer, and then we're going to turn this over to Mark and, and, and have a good time. Yes, ma'am. I have to share this. Okay. Jacob got saved this last week. Oh, oh. 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 And he found that when it's, it's, it, uh, he finally has the feeling in his chest is going away. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I guess oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> So it's we're praying. Quiet. Jacob, Jacob, we've been praying for with uh, upcoming surgery and so forth and and uh, waiting for a diagnosis and we got one so we're praying now for that but uh, most important uh, the physical health but the spiritual health is, is most yeah. important for, for sure and then also give it Jane give us a quick report on Lindsay oh, we've been yes. praying for her and her shower and all that work yeah we had baby. a shower on Saturday she came to church on Sunday and she was sitting there and said I think my contractions about five to six minutes apart <laughs> <laughs> She was born Sunday. She weighed eight nine. Whoa, whoa. Oh, wow. Nine, well, they said 19, but they didn't stretch her out. For <laughs> she's about 20 inches long, but they're doing very well. They're home doing great. Good. They had to go pick up Brayler, her brother, her little brother, for Sunday school because yeah. he loves to come to church. Oh, oh, he just good, says, good, that's good. my church. And Miss Emma, that's who he has in the nursery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. everybody's yes. doing good. So yeah. And thank you for bringing Joe to Sunday yeah. school, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Curtis. Uh, I have three of them. Mm. Uh, I'm uh, bringing down the two because I forgot. It's been a while since I talked to that gentleman. Uh, Victor, my supervisor at work, has knee yeah. issues. Victor, okay. And he has to, I don't know what his situation is exactly. They've drained fluid off his knee and he's on pain meds um, for it, but it's hard for him to get around at first. Victor. Victor, yeah. Okay, knees. And then uh, Linda Pale, anybody? Oh, yeah. Yes. She Dr. is Pale. having cataract surgery. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, I love her. Nursing I professor. Her professor her 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 I bumped into her Walmart yeah. couple about a mm -hmm. week ago. Could have been a week ago, could have been two weeks. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she's, she's, she's a little worried. Yeah. Yes. She's a little about it, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's yeah. an old timer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we got here 45 years ago, yeah. we met her on campus at Mary Hart Battle, and Janice is having a hard time with cataracts. So. <laughs> <laughs> cat surgery. Cat, cat surgery. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of cat scans, cat she surgery. Was <laughs> she was a math teacher. Cat yeah. surgery. Yeah. Yeah. She was. What was funny is how you rated on into what she was saying while you were listening. I uh, know. Well, I was, I was empathizing because I wasn't yes. sure how to spell it. Yours one, yours yeah. one. Yeah. I spell check. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's Procedure pray. Procedure sounds a little Father better. God, we love you so much and praise you. And we're just looking forward to Mark hopping up here and, mm -hmm. and guiding us through uh, these next uh, verses and passages of, of, of Philippians, Father. And uh, we thank you that we can have joy. I thank you for the laughter. Yes. Even before we got everybody's attention, people were talking and laughing. And, and I just thank you for that uh, fellowship, uh, yes. that true agape, mm -hmm. koinonia kind of fellowship. And so... Uh, Right now, though, we want to be very specific. And Father, I just want to start off by saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you for Jacob. And, uh, we, you are, he is our brother. Uh, Father, uh, you are his God, and Jesus is his Savior. And so with that, though, we claim Jehovah Rapha, our yes. healer, Father, on his behalf as he continues with uh, procedures and diagnosis and all those who have made decisions. We just pray there. Father, uh, again, we continue thanking you for Gene's brother being found. Uh, Jeff, Hook and I, his, he had a great interview. Uh, again, this past week we prayed for him, and he'll know something in the coming days. So we pray for Jeff and, and Melissa as, as they're seeking his job. Father, uh, again, Kathy McQueen, Jehovah Rapha, uh, mm -hmm. healing with the cancer. 
Madison Osborne, our sweet, sweet yes. young little sister, Father Liz, she continues having the therapy that's going to help is helping her father with her memory and, and so forth. And, and for Robin and her family, as, as Jason's away uh, deployed, uh, we pray for your presence, Jehovah Shama, to be with Jason. Father, uh, uh, we rejoice. We've been praying for Josh and Lindsay uh, this whole time, uh, all along. And now, praise the Lord, Father, uh, everybody's fine. We pray for this precious little gift that has come into uh, this precious family. Steve uh, Walker, Father, and Judy mm -hmm. with his cancer. And it just, uh, it's a very difficult situation, Father. So the Prince of Peace, the God of Comfort, we just ask you to touch and minister to them in, in a very, very special way. And meet, uh, just be with Judy uh, and those that are supporting her. Father, for Sharon and Kelly White, as they deal with Sharon's mom and the mm -hmm. sale of the house and Kelly's job interviews and just all the above, Father, just minister to them in a supernatural way. Father, uh, Michael Cunningham also deployed, and we, we thank you that we can call on you. Jehovah Shammah, that's one of your many names of your presence. You are where, you're everywhere. You can be withheld from nowhere. And that causes me to jump right down to the, t to the schools, and, and I don't want us thinking in any way ever that, that God is being held out of the schools. He cannot be withheld from anything or anywhere. He is there, he, and we can claim that presence, Father. Whether a scripture can be read or a prayer can be said, his presence there, and we're going to claim that on behalf of our teachers and our faculty and our, and our students and all their, all their families. And as we pray for the schools, Father, uh, the seniors that are starting off in their final year, the new kids that are just first-time experiencing school and then those that went off left high school and they're heading off all over the place to, to the vocational school to college junior college wherever mm -hmm. father take care of them for victor uh, and his knees father be um again sufficient in his discomfort in his pain and i just pray for whatever measures are need to be taken on his behalf thank you that curtis has been uh, uh sensitive to that and for yes. linda pell what a godly spirit-filled sweet lady for decades has been ministering yes. uh to college students and to, in her church and and now father our time to call on uh you as uh jehovah rapha as these cataracts are, are dealt with and and healed and father and uh, Brad had mentioned his workplace, just godly principles to prevail, whether it's yes. McLean, I don't care what it is, Father, we got businesses all over Temple Belt and Colleen, uh, Father, we just, again, pray and claim your presence there, and, and the workplace ministry for all of our believers that are there, and then, Father, um, prayer, that we do, we don't drive by a school without praying for them, or <coughs> clinic to pray for, the, for those who are ill, of the university, Father, for those students, and students that have come from all over the world uh, to that place, and where the mission is coming to us, Father. Uh, we are so blessed, and for the soldiers, um, we, we're praying for Jason, but people who are at the cutting edge, um, we just pray uh, that you be, be with them all over the globe. And Father, if I've over, overlooked something, you know exactly what it is. If there's anything unspoken, you, you know it. And, and so I give that to you, but right now, prepare our hearts to receive your, the truth of your word. In these next 40, 45 minutes, Father, just let Mark have the freedom yes. to be used by you, to be your voice with your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you. All right. Thank you, buddy. You know, whenever I hear something like Jacob's the report, I'm always reminded of God's word where it says, train up a child in the way they should go, and in the end, they will not depart from it. And so, you know, even for our children, but we've got new little children, and, uh, you know, we need to be praying for them and the families. And so, we're going to continue with Philippians. And uh, for those that are new, we, we've been studying Philippians. We're at the end of chapter 3. It's the epistle of joy. And... Uh, we're, we're going to wrap up three pretty quick here and spend most of our time in chapter four. And so, you know, by way of introduction, um, we've talked about in verses, uh, chapter three, verses 12 through 16, where Paul's teaching us to reach for the prize. And he gives us several disciplines that we need to be practicing. One of them is pursuing the prize requires a proper awareness. 
He also says that pursuing the prize requires maximum effort. You know, when, when Paul shares with us, a lot of times he uses uh, athletic events or themes to describe a Christian's, a Christian's walk and maturity. Uh, he also says pursue the prize requires focused concentration. Okay, these are all things that we, we talked about last week. And then uh, he also says pursuing the prize requires proper motivation. Um, and then as we look at uh, the, the fifth one, pursuing the prize requires proper recognition. And so we're going to pick up today in uh, Philippians 3.16. And uh, it says in, in Philippians 3.16, if somebody would read... Uh, 16 Philippians 3 16 through the end of the chapter. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us be of the same mind. Brethren, join in, the follow, join in following my example, and note those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of the cross of Christ. Though whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their, in, in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Oh, I'm sorry, keep on going, I'm sorry. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly, eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. So when you look at verses, verse 316, it says, only let us live up. If you look at the word only, it's kind of like only or however. Uh, it is used by Paul to express, hey, one final thought, okay? So he, he's, he's taking this last prerequisite for pursuing the prize, and it's, it's in, in the form of consistency. So when we think about our walk, our maturing, our, our pursuing Christ-likeness, there's got to be a consistency about us each day. Uh, we should have a quiet time. Uh, we should have time to read in God's word. And if I say all of these things, and maybe you're not doing that, it's not to step on your toes per se. It's really just an encouragement to say, hey, if you really want to mature in Christ, these are some of the prerequisites or things, the disciplines that we need to be practicing each and every day. Uh, so he says, having developed a proper awareness, effort, focus, motivation, and recognition, believers must consistently keep living by that same standard to which they have attained. So, so he's talking about all of those things that he's just described to us. And so that last one, think about this, in your personal walk with the Lord. Uh, Paul is saying, hey, you have to be running forward. You never want to stop. You've got to focus on the prize all the way to the end. And so a question we can always ask ourselves Am I backslidden? And a way that you can figure out if you're backslidden, you can ask your own self, you don't, nobody else needs to ask you this, has there ever been a point in time in your life that you were closer to the Lord than you are at this very moment? And if you have, that's not an indictment, it's to say, hey, get right with the Lord. Pursue him with the passion that Paul has told us about in Philippians, okay? So then, not only does he, he tell us all this, he says, I'm going to give you some examples, okay? So he talks about himself, and it's important to understand, uh, Paul is not putting himself on a pedestal of spiritual perfection, but instead he was encouraging the Philippians to follow him, an imperfect sinner, as he pursued the goal of Christ-likeness. Okay, so Paul's not lifting himself up. He also talks about Timothy and Epaphroditus as examples that they should follow. So as you think about this and you think about as adults, but you think about children, you know, and you're teaching them, it's always important to give them kind of the guidelines or the disciplines to mature. It's also important to give them examples, 
okay? Somebody that they can follow, all right? As adults, we're no different. You know, as we pursue our Christ likeness, we need to follow the same thing. But then he follows that up and he says, flee from enemies. If you look at Philippians 3, 18 and 19, it says, for, I has, has, for as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. So the apostle uh, warned that in pursuing the spiritual prize of Christ's likeness, it must be recognized that there are many examples to avoid. Okay, the enemies of which Paul warned do not appear to be openly hostile. So when you think about that, uh, think about in the churches across the globe how Satan, in his deception, we have pastors leading churches and congregations that are not following God's word. That's what Paul's teaching the Philippians. Hey, as you grow, be careful, because if you're not careful, they'll slip in, and sometimes they even get in leadership positions, okay? And so as believers, we need to be sensitive to that and watch out for that. It tells us in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 13 through 15, 15, for such men are false prophets, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, as if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. So it's not going to be that God's not going to take care of them, but as believers in protecting the body, the fellowship, isn't that so cool? We're going to talk about fellowship, but, but Charlie and I talk, Man, just listening to everybody talking and laughing, and I mean, man, if that doesn't get you fired up, I mean, coming to a class like this, I mean, just the, the fellowship, the, the commonness, not only of, of brothers and sisters, but just knowing that at the center of all that is Christ, okay? So, uh, they, be, they became part of the church, possibly even leaders, I've already talked about that, but their subtleness in which they made into the church, Paul's talking about how dangerous that can be because he they can quickly lead them astray, okay? And so remember, Paul, when he's talking to the Philippians, think about Paul, you know, think about your children or your grandchildren. You know, that's the love that he had for the Philippians, and he was trying to share under house arrest all those things that they needed to be aware, aware of as children so that they could grow and mature, okay? And so, as we think about that, you know, God's word tells us that we don't want to be tossed to and fro, okay? These are all principles and disciplines that we need to follow to be mature and rooted in God's word, okay? So, um, Paul, this, I find this very interesting too, and, and it, it, it tells us, more intimately of Paul's heart, we should be our own heart as well. Paul was heartbroken as he recognized the havoc the false teachers could, could cause in the Philippian church. He no doubt also <clears throat> wept over the false teacher's fate. Man, you know, sometimes that's hard for me when I, I see the evil in the world to, to, to weep. For, for the for that and what's going to happen to them at the end and and you know I've often said this in, in classes that, that I've taught when you think about what's the worst thing about hell separation from God forever having seen Jesus and then be separated yes. having seen him and then ushered into hell I mean it, it, it's 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 unfathomable. So, uh, so now in in uh, chapter three, verses twenty and twenty one, it says, as we've already read, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. <coughs> Man. So, this refers to our official status, as we all know. We're going to heaven. That's where our citizenship <laughs> is. But my, my encouragement to you is, how often do you think about that? Okay, so here's seven things of why we should think about that more often than maybe we do. I know for me, it was, oh me, not oh my. So number one, we are members of Christ's kingdom, which is not of this world. John 18, 36. Number one. Number two, the name, our names are recorded in heaven. Man, think about it. <coughs> Number three, our Savior is there. Man, that should be all the reason in the world to motivate us to think about our citizenship being in heaven. Number four, our fellow saints are there. Man, yes. I, I have to believe we're going to be doing this in heaven. We're going to be <laughs> praising God for eternity, but man, it is going to be joyous. I mean, it, the, fellowship, the fellowship, our fellow saints are there. Number five, our inheritance is there. Man. Number six, our reward is there. Pretty cool. Number seven, our treasure is there. So as you go about your <coughs> week, this coming week, my encouragement to you is to think upon those heavenly things. Because when we think upon those things, and we're getting ready to find this out in chapter 4, they help us to live a much more Christ-like life. Because remember, as we've talked about in weeks past, we have our blinders focused on where our home is. It's in heaven. It's with Christ. Okay? So, it is from heaven that we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the disciples who watched as Christ ascended into heaven, the angel said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Woo. Woo. Amen. <laughs> All right, so as you're thinking about heaven, it, I, I tend to gravitate to look up, especially as I'm outside. Yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah. like, and even in my house, I, I tend to go, well, heaven's up, so I'm going to be looking up. Yeah. So as we're gazing into heaven, thinking about this, man, Christ could come at any time. Yeah. I mean, we could see him just like the disciples coming back out of heaven, coming to take his children home. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so believers are not to wait for Christ's return with attitudes of passive resignation, or bored disinterest. Instead, we are to be eagerly wait a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Man. So that's chapter three. Yeah, boy. We're gonna jump into miracles. Do happen? Miracles do happen. <laughs> 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 He so, was just kidding. Oh, no, no, no. He, he wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. I only speak truth. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, we, so when we think about that, and then chapter 4 is coming up, you know, it, it's like, you know, as I was reflecting, you know, chapter 1, man, it was good. And chapter 2, man, it just got even better. And then chapter 3 blew me away. And then chapter 4... Paul just knocks it out of the park mm -hmm. at the end of the day using an athletic euphemism there. So, if I could get somebody to read Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Okay. Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore you, Odia, I pronounce that right. It's and okay. I, yeah. I okay. And and I implore Sintiti, uh, Sintiti, I don't know, to be 
of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, and Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Mm -hmm. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let, uh, pray. let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whether or whatever <coughs> things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of God of, of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. 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 So, label the uh, Philippians 4, 1 through 9, spiritual stability. Okay, so we're going to talk about seven key elements that Paul provides us in our everyday walk as believers in Christ. So, so Paul's message here is one of encouragement. Okay, so again, he's, he's talking about growth, but he's also talking about how you keep running this race. He's already told us, stay strong in the faith. Do not waver. Run the race for the prize. Okay, we're running for the prize. What's the prize? Christ. 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 Okay, Christ's likeness on this earth. And when he comes back, we will receive our glorified bodies in, in heaven. Okay, so in this passage, we find some serious threats going on. So, Euodia and K are two prominent women in the church and they're you know they're having arguments but because they're and that's not to suggest i find it interesting that paul uses women no no no, no. Oh. hey i was on a roll until hey madison <laughs> it just kind of shows women have, are very open minded and very intellectually Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go, women. Absolutely. Come on in. And then you're the woman through the door. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start bringing my handcuffs to <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. No, but they're having such a dispute that Paul is addressing it, okay? Because. Melissa and I have experienced this in other churches, and it wasn't by women, uh, it was by men. Uh, we, we've seen church splits, okay, because uh, of all the things that Paul has already taught us about the unity of the body, the fellowship of believers, here's two women, in this case, who were squabbling, and it's serious enough that Paul, and, and we, we also know, this is kind of an interesting fact, it's not about doctrine, okay? Because whenever it's about doctrine, Paul always addresses the doctrine, okay? So, it, so it's not a doctrinal issue. It's just something that they're grinding each other about. But it's serious enough that it could cause a, cause a problem in the church. So Paul tells us uh, spiritual instability, well, excuse me, the dispute threatened to, to the, split the church into rival factions. So when we talk about spiritual instability... When someone is, in sta is unstable, it leads to disappointment, doubt, discouragement, and an ineffective witness. So when you, if you think about your own life, uh, in your walk of maturity, maybe when you were a new believer, uh, sometimes things can happen in your life that can kind of throw you into kilter. I mean, you know, you, you kind of go, well, Lord, why'd you, why'd you let that happen? It, you know, or... Maybe there's some pain that, that, that enters in. But spiritually mature believers, Paul's going to tell us 
how to handle those and be stable because he's already told us we are going to, we're going to experience all of those things as new believers, but as mature believers, but it's how we handle them is the important thing of a, of a mature believer. So one of the words he uses, stiko in verses 1 through 9 says, stand firm. It is an imperative. It's a command with almost a military ring to it. It's like soldiers in the front line. Believers are commanded to hold their positions while under attack. We've already learned we're going to come under attack, right? Okay. So how can we stand firm? How can we not be swayed back and forth? Paul's going to tell us these things or teach us these things. The passage opens with the transitional word, therefore melissa and i've always been taught if you see the word therefore you have to ask yourself well, what's it there for okay <laughs> because it's referring back in this case to chapter 3 verses 12 through 21 okay so paul has just told us this and now he's saying because of this therefore here we we find paul in verses 2 and 3 pleading with uodia and soon 2k so the number one thing that we're going to talk about in spiritual stability is cultivating harmony in the Christian fellowship. Okay? So here's Paul. He's addressing it. The fellowship and support of the body of Christ is an important factor in developing and maintaining spiritual stability. The church should be a place where people support each other, hold each other accountable, and care for each other. Okay? When you look at Lakeview, you know, well, I'll go ahead and say it because my mind gets foggy. Probably, probably one of the churches that we've been in in Melissa and I's married life that exhibits all of this. I mean, to way and above. Okay, that's part of the reason why we're here. Uh, the church, the fellowship, it should be a communion of life in which, and this is this is important. This is in First Thessalonians five fourteen says in which believers restore those who've fallen into sin. You know, a lot of times as believers, I don't know if y'all have seen this, you know, I've seen churches that when somebody sins, you know, that believer is almost shunned. You know, they're pushed out. They're, you know, they're, they're not, they don't go to them as in biblical and try to restore them. Okay. Uh, it also tells us to bear each other's burdens. The church is to admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. So cultivating harmony in the fellowship requires all of this. Now, I don't know if anybody has a problem with this besides myself, okay? Melissa would share with you that I need to work on this. So does anybody have a problem besides me with be patient with everyone? <laughs> now, now, Mr. Shelfworth, I know because you've even said that you've had issues. So I'm, a, I'm a kindred spirit with you, brother. I'm a kindred spirit with you, okay? So what Paul is instructing us to do is, hey, if we don't have patience, we need to cultivate patience. Man, you know? And oh, by the way, Paul didn't say cultivate patience when you feel good about it. He's telling us cultivate patience, period, okay? Just, just food for thought. Food for hey, thought. Just got a question. Yes, sir. How do you do that? <laughs> no, I'm serious. You get married. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for me, Seriously, no, I'm, see, I'm, being, I'm being as honest, I mean, transparent. For me, uh, you know, and, you know, when you study this, everybody that's ever taught a class will realize that, hey, the one teaching it gets more out of this than, than everybody, okay? So for me, that's an area that God spoke to me, number one, that I need to do better on, okay? Because Melissa's been telling me that for years, okay? <laughs> so it's not when you get married. I know. It's not when you get married. <laughs> the second thing is pray. And, and for me, 
when, when you become sensitized to it, I know when it's happening now. Used to, I didn't know when it was. I mean, it would happen, and, and I would realize it afterwards. But the Holy Spirit's prompting me now, and that's not to say that I'm getting a handle on it. It means that I'm getting a handle on it, that I'm growing more Christ-like to be the awareness, the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Am I, does, that make, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I add something that? I was just going to say is, I, I can immediately think of people in my life that try my patience. <laughs> and when I, when, when Paul says that he, he cultivate it, it's because we have these opportunities. Like God doesn't give us patience. He gives us opportunities yep. to mm -hmm. become patient. That's the hard part. So when you know that there is an, an opportunity approaching, because sometimes you know when you're going to be dealing with these people, <laughs> pray, mm -hmm. no, honestly, uh -huh. pray about it mm -hmm. and say, Lord, you know, just, Help me with this. Yeah. Guide my words. Breathe in. Hold your breath. Breathe out. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. while you're speaking to that person, you just have to pause and you have to. Yes. Okay. And then you you keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's that's part of how you deal with that in the in those opportunities. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sharon. There is a book I don't remember it because this is not original with me, uh, but they call them sandpaper people. Mm. The people who rub up against you. So immediately, whenever I'm dealing with people like that, I'm like sandpaper people. And this is, I mean, because what it is, and then what it is, is it's they are the sandpaper acting on you, and you have the opportunity to get stronger, more mm -hmm. Christ-like. And what I keep telling my sons is, because um, I keep going back to, you know, and everything, and self-control, yeah. and self-control, because patience is an exercise in self-control. Self self These are all your, disciplines. They're all yeah. disciplines, and it is getting it under the control. Now, when I say self-control, obviously, I mean, you know, control of Christ, because I can't do that by myself. Exactly. Because my knee-jerk reaction is, I want to be the sandpaper person, <laughs> not be the one who's being shined, smooth, my favorite piece of furniture. I have no idea how much this guy had to spend time mm -hmm. with different levels of sandpaper mm -hmm. to make it what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So.